I'm going to be showing you guys some cool uh, use cases that I've been thinking of for the new generative extend feature. I want to first of all show you know, what is generative extend. We have this cool stock video of a flower blooming. So let's say, yeah, the time lapse ended here, but I just need a little bit more of the clip. In the toolbar, you should see this new generative extend tool. So it's a really simple tool to use. You just click the tool, you go on your timeline at the end of your clip, you just click and you drag. One of my first use cases for this was if we have another clip, for example, if you ever try to add a transition, so right click, apply default transition, it'll say insufficient media. Now, this is not an error. It's just letting you know, we're gonna crossfade these two clips, but because you're at the ends of both of the clips, in the middle of it, uh, we don't have the frames, basically. If you could tell the flower time-lapse just sort of pauses in time. Now with generative extend, we can make those frames out of nothing. So as you guys can see, it says AI generated. It has this little tag here. So if we give this a play from what we were just seeing to now, I mean, it's pretty convincing to me. So now where I wanna make a transition between these two clips, I can now overlap the new AI frames with our typical cross dissolve and now I get our generative extend powered fade transition. This is pretty cool. I'm able to create those frames out of nothing. You can also generative extend audio. It's perfect for like uh, ambient noise or room tone. So if I show this clip, it's a train you know, arriving at a station. As video editors, you've probably seen something called a J cut or an L cut. If you're wanting to do an L cut, previously you would have to actually cut out part of the clip, clip cuts out, but you still hear the audio. The shame is I didn't want to cut before the train fully stopped. I wanted to actually be able to wait till we got to a full standstill like this and then do the cut. But the problem is now I'm running out of audio. But now with gender extend, I can just do the audio. <laughs> So yeah, you get smooth, continuous noise. Another really cool use case that I thought of for generative extend, this coffee pouring video. I had the cool idea to have like a continuous pour happening. So yeah, how big is the cup? Yeah, rather than like the pour ending at this point, I can cut the video before the coffee pour gets dwindling down. Okay. And I can generative extend that clip. So as you can see, this is the real frames, this is the real frames, and then these are generated frames. Here's this time-lapse clip. Why not make it like we sat there patiently on this rooftop for an wow. extra hour instead yeah. of going to lunch? So, wow. yeah, it gives you a nice continuity. It even adds like that sunshine. I'm going to actually head over to Firefly on the web. I'm in the image to video right now, and in here you can add a frame and do a prompt. Yeah, I have this picture here of a, a clock tower. You know, this is maybe a busy campus, people walking around. You might not be able to sit there and get a time lapse with an unobstructed view. So I dragged this photo in to our Firefly model and I will show you guys the final result that I already prepared. And if I press play here, this is Firefly generated time lapse of me putting like seasons changing clock tower. I think that's pretty cool for if you're making a storytelling or documentary style video. That's what I got for everyone. Hope you guys uh, got some cool things from this with use cases for generative extend. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you around.